So now in this video we're going to look at this inline fuse holder right here. I got 10 in a kit and also these uh, fuses here. We're going to use the 0.5 amps. These uh, came uh, pre-tinned. Even though I have uh, 20 amp uh, fuses on here, the uh, inline fuse holder, uh, it's going to be a little blurry, but it's only showing 10 amps on uh, the fuse holder there. So I would limit to that. This is 16 gauge wire, so I'm guessing that is the maximum current you'd want for a 16 gauge wire. So now we have the uh, same chart on the inside there. Shows uh, 0.5 is the uh, second right to the top. So I yanked one out of there. So now it's easy to see on person, but I got the uh, loop here so that uh, you can see it on camera better. 0 0.5 amp, so make sure you check that out. It also says 250 volts, but that's high voltage. Don't work with high voltage. So now I got the fuse between a couple alligator clips so it doesn't roll around. All we have to do is uh, unscrew these, uh, set the fuse in there, and then we want uh, this side going towards the load because you can see it would be easier to short circuit this if it came from a power supply to something than this one over here, which is uh, well inside the body there. And I just push them together and uh, twist. There we go, we caught them a little bit so I'll just keep twisting now and they are tightened at that point. So now I'm gonna need a wire for the uh, negative side of the uh, circuit right there. Uh, so we're about the same length. I have this uh, wire cutter and we have a cut. This wire cutter also has a wire stripper. I think we wanna go to the tongue there for the perfect length and it will uh, strip away the plastic insulation and we should have enough exposed wire there. Since this is stranded wires, they'll come apart if I uh, rub on them. They're not uh, tinned like the uh, inline fuse. We have these uh, ferrule connectors. We need the uh, 16 American wire gauge connector, which are these black ones. So now I bumped these wires or something, so I'll do uh, this one first. We'll give it a, a slight twist uh, this way. And then when we have the uh, connector, so I'll slide it in there, I twist the connector in the same direction and uh, the plastic insulation is big enough where it will uh, stop it. So that's why you want to limit how much uh, wire you expose. And we just have to set it in there and crimp it down, not on the plastic, just on the metal. And we have our crimp. So now I have these uh, screw down barrel connectors there. We want female on this side because that's the side we're gonna provide power. Remember, that's the side we want that there. All we have to do, so this is why we have the ferrule connector. The uh, stranded wire might not go in there very well. And this is actually my first time uh, inserting a ferrule in there. It's really tight. So uh, these little screw down things seems uh, pretty common for 16 gauge to be about uh, the largest you're gonna get. We just have to screw it down. And I already screwed down our load side, which will have uh, the male end out there. So remember, the inline fuse, the wire was tinned, so I didn't have to add a connector. Somebody already soldered uh, the stranded wire together. Otherwise, the rest of it is uh, stranded. You can see, though, that we got plus for where the uh, positive side is, and then a negative for where the negative side, the black wire is. The uh, outer end of the connectors there is the uh, negative, and then the inside the uh, pin on the inside there, that is the positive. So that's uh, usually how the polarity goes for uh, barrel connectors, but uh, not always, so be careful. And now we're gonna do a quick test. So this is an AC to a DC converter. I have it set to output nine volts because that's a good voltage to use with these uh, power supplies. You can go lower and higher, but I think I fried some of these uh, with 12 volts. So I'm just gonna plug that in to an AC outlet and uh, it's powering nine volts now. You can see that when I apply power there, the uh, blue LED is lit. This is a cheap breadboard though. The uh, connections are not uh, terribly great. Now we are going to unplug this here and uh, that barrel plug is, they have different uh, connectors there. We are going to uh, first, since this is a little trickier to plug in right there, plug that into the breadboard power supply and then uh, the power into the uh, female side right there. And uh, there, now you can see the LED is on again. It is working normally. So the test we're gonna do, I've short circuited these before. The power usually cuts out. We're just gonna short circuit the uh, power supply. Hopefully the fuse uh, blows, but not the uh, power supply. So there you go, we want to unshort circuit it. And uh, so yeah, now it's not gonna turn on. Let's get rid of the uh, fuse though. 
plug it in and uh, there we go now it's working so the fuse saved uh, probably the breadboard power supply because I've shorted them before and then they didn't work these cost about a dollar um, I don't know how much the fuses are I got all those fuses plus the uh, 10 fuse holders for about eleven dollars so the price of uh, this uh, wire here and uh, a number of fuses probably about the same as uh, one of these breadboard power supplies so that's a uh, protection I recommend and even though this is a long video I thought I would uh, replace the fuse right there so now you can see the circuit working this is the uh, burnt out fuse right there um, the, the little metal that's inside there is now touching the glass so I don't think it used to I think it used to just go out straight across without touching the glass I could be wrong but in uh, any case there you can see now it works so these breadboard power supply I don't know how much they are I think they're like a couple dollars now or something like that uh, I bought a whole bunch of like uh, eight years ago or something because this was actually how I powered my circuits for a long period of time had this nine volt coming in and then this drops the voltage to five volts but that extra voltage is converted to heat so that's why I usually use nine volts even though it says you can use 12 I think I burnt some out at uh, 12 even I think that's like uh, literally the uh, maximum and so they they get it hot if you use uh, 12 volts so that's why I use nine but in any case I would have uh, saved a number of them if I had a fuse like this as you could see uh, there because I shorted them a number of times so if you're using the breadboard power supply I recommend a fuse like this 